Okay, so I've just been sent my first digital microscope and this is in exchange for a video review and it's from a company called Andenstar. Now, before I unbox it, let's just have a quick look at the website and see at some of the other things that they do. So there's loads of products they do and uh, you can see here this handheld portable microscope looks very interesting, so have a click on that. This, I guess, is for outdoor use and seeing things close up. But uh, I'm more interested in the product that I've been sent, which is one of these uh, digital microscopes with the LCD screen. And uh, the one I've been sent is this one, the AD407. But if we scroll down through, you can see there's loads of different options they do and all sorts of ideas of what you can see close up. Uh, certainly for uh, my side of it, things like the Raspberry Pi Pico doing soldering and uh, fine wiring, it's going to be very useful for. So let's have a look inside that box. So the remote control has various different settings. You can see there's brightness, zoom controls, all sorts of extra things which I'll have a look at in a minute. I've got an HDMI to mini HDMI connection. And uh, this is obviously so you can plug it into an external monitor as well. Also be useful for me because I can use my screen capture device with it. Reasonable instruction book, just an ordinary USB power supply. There's a few screws and things in there. This cable's got USB-A on it, a little power cable. Looks like micro USB and then we've got a few different controls on that. And this is the LCD display. You can see it's got buttons on it uh, for various different controls. On the back of it, we have the microscope and the lens. And if I twist this, it does feel, I've got an SLR camera, and it does feel like a really nice motion to do the focusing. On the top of it, you can see mini HDMI, micro USB, and the SD card slot. And these are the lights and the platform. This is like a solid bit of metal with some big rubber feet on the bottom of it. And uh, you can see these are all poseable little LED lights and we'll see how bright they are in a minute. Okay, so very easy to set up and also doesn't take a lot of power. I'm using my USB output on my four-way socket, which I always use and it's powering it absolutely fine. You can see I've got a close up of, uh, well, that was basically the, the warning sticker on the screen. Uh, it doesn't come with any batteries, so you're going to need a couple of AAA batteries. So if you're giving this as a present to someone, make sure you've got some batteries. And you can see from the side view here, if I undo this, I can then lower or raise the microscope to get it closer to the object. And you can see if we're too close, uh, it won't actually manage to focus. So if you pull away from it a little bit, uh, it will then allow you to focus in on the item and you can see it's super close. So you can see the little control panel here allows you to raise the brightness of the LED lights. They do go incredibly bright. I've got an SD card on there. You can see my camera can't pick it up, but it looks great on the screen. And I can also turn it off and turn it back on again. And it really doesn't take long to start up at all. You get a quick welcome screen and then it's straight into it. So this is a brand new micro SD card. I'm just going to pop that in the back. There you go. Nice definite click. And let's switch that on. So now we can use the buttons on the display. So we've got things like mode, uh, which switches us between camera and uh, playback mode and back to video camera. Uh, we've got zoom in and out. So you can see I can zoom up to three times uh, with these buttons. And you've got various things like OK, which starts recording, uh, and the camera button, which takes a photo. But you're better off really to use this because then you're not shaking the camera. So if I was to change the mode to camera, and then take a photo. I believe that's taken a photo. Uh, and then if I change it back to video, that's on video now, press OK, and you can see it's starting to record. And if I just move it around a tiny bit while it's in the video, so we can have a look on this board. I don't know what that is. On the chip, that doesn't look good. So then if I press the OK button again, that's paused. If I press the mode button, you can go back to camera and then back to playback. So that's the still photo I took and I'll show that on the screen. Uh, and also I'll play back the video. Uh, if I press up or down, that selects. Uh, so that's the still photo. That's the uh, movie. I can see it now. It says MP4 on there. So if I press OK, that will start to play that movie. And you'll see it start to move. There you go. So it's moving around. And again, I'll put this on full screen. So if I press mode to come out of that, uh, then I've got menu. I've got loads of options on menu. So let's go in a bit closer for this bit. Actually, it's a good opportunity to plug it into my screen capture device behind there. So let's plug in the mini HDMI in the top there. 
and let's plug this other end into my screen capture device. My screen capture device can capture at 1080, uh, also onto an SD card, but this will allow me to capture the screen from here and all the menus, hopefully, if the menus show up on the external display. Yeah, so you can see that's shown up. So if I press menu now, uh, you can see, uh, and I'll be able to switch over to screen capture. So this lens has really good depth of field. You can see here, this is a micro USB socket on a Raspberry Pi Model B. Uh, and if I twist it, just have a look at the sort of T-shaped gap. You can, you can see I can focus on the bottom edge of that, but then I can move it back to the socket. So it's so tight, you know how small a micro USB is. Uh, I can focus between those two just by twisting it back and forth. Amazing. Anyway, let's look at the menus. So you can see here on the menu, we've got resolution. Uh, so it's set to full HD at the moment, but it does go right up to 4K. So 4K at 24 frames a second, or Quad HD, which is 1440 at 30, and Full HD, so 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames a second. Then we've got exposure, so we can brighten this up, not that we need to, um, but if you wanted to brighten something up, you could uh, digitally, but we've got the lights anyway. Uh, record audio, oh, I didn't know I had that when I was doing it before. I'm not going to bother with that because I'm going to use my phone for the audio. Uh, with my microphone uh, date stamp. You might have noticed my date was wrong because I haven't said it yet. Time lapse record, that's interesting. So if you're using this for uh, like an experiment or a plant growing or something like that, that might be interesting. Uh, sharpness control, I guess it's on the standard set. Oh, it's on normal at the moment. Uh, and the freeze option. So if I go back to menu and then back in again and select mode, You've got settings here as well. So we've got grid line settings. So we can put a cross line on. We can put lines all over to make sure things are straight. Direction, location. We've got color mode on here, wide mode. All sorts of things on here. Date and time, frequency for different displays. Formatting of the SD card, default settings, and version of software. There's software downloads on their site. So if there's an update, I guess you probably apply that by uh, micro SD. And then if we want to zoom in, I'm zooming in on the remote control now. It's just ridiculous. The actual, with the naked eye, this looks like a nicely polished surface. Uh, but when you look at it under this mic, it also, this, I bought this second hand. And uh, it looks clean with the naked eye, but look at all the bits on it and all these little hairs and bits of dust and things like that. It's a wonder they still work. So let's change the resolution and I'm going to change it to 1440 because that's why I upload all my YouTube videos in. Uh, and let's go back to, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm on video mode anyway. So I'm going to press record now. So I have a blade of grass from the garden. Let's pop that underneath. It's got some raindrops on it, which looks pretty cool. Let's try and get it to settle down without knocking all the raindrops off. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Uh, and so if I use the zoom function on here, I can zoom in a bit further as well. You see it's picking up the two lights, the two, uh, two little LED lights are there, but the detail is fantastic. Some old 50p coins. So let's pop them under there. This is an Olympics one. Let's use my screwdriver to move it around. So if I just focus that, because obviously the depth is slightly different because this is on the deck. There we go, and you can see, so this is a coin that would have been in circulation. You can see all the, all the damage to the edges and everything. You can see the London 2012 logo there as well. And the uh, volleyball athlete. Now this screwdriver end is a size four zeros from my screwdriver kit. And I have a screw that it fits in, and it's actually one of these. This is a micro NT cassette, which is a tiny cassette uh, that Sony made, uh, I don't know how many years ago. It was um, in the era of DAT, and it had the same sort of quality as DAT, digital audio tape, so really high quality, um, but, uh, but it was like a spy recorder. And this actually fits in, this screwdriver bit actually fits in. So see if I can get a good angle for this. Change the focus a bit, and you can see that if I spin it around, I can actually undo that ridiculously tiny screw. And to the naked eye, this looks clean, and I've gone over it with isopropyl, but it still looks 
Uh, I mean, it, it is years old. It was on a display stand for a long time. And uh, yeah, it looks a right state. Right, let's have a look at a record as well. So this is the surface of a record. And you can see uh, it's got quite a few scratches on it. Uh, it wasn't mine from you. Uh, and you can see the grooves and how the grooves change to, to make the audio come through. It's a really interesting video. I'll see if I can put a link in the description of, of how records work and how it's recorded. Really, really interesting. Uh, I watched it recently. Yeah, this could definitely do with a clean. This is an old record from my loft. Uh, I've got some in much better condition, but I didn't want to really put them down on the on the metal seats there. Look at that line there, the way that curves underneath. That's really weird. But it does look like it's meant to be. Yeah, it really it properly curves, look, that one there. So I think this is amethyst, and it's got little spots on it, little tiny yellow and black spots. Don't know what that is, but I didn't notice it before. And something here from a sort of precious stone store. I'm sure it's not valuable, it was one of the kids' ones. But yeah, just amazing detail. This is the outside of a kiwi fruit that my daughter's just had for lunch. I also thought it would be interesting to show the difference in the pixel resolution of an iPod Touch second gen to an iPhone XS. So first up, this is the App Store icon on the iPod Touch. And here it is with the Retina display on the iPhone XS. So yeah, way, way more detailed. So the icons, even under a microscope, are actually pretty decent looking. And let's go back to the iPod uh, and just show a few of those. So MX Tube, you can see there. Very low resolution in comparison and nowhere near the brightness. Okay, so here's what a needle looks like. Magnified, not quite so shiny like that. And here's some thread. Now this is the smallest needle I could find. I usually pick one with a much bigger hole. Ah, there you go. That's crazy, look at the frayed bits around it. And I have found some other bits. Uh, so there's a bolt here which allows you to tilt forward and back. Uh, so you can change the angle of this uh, and get a different perspective. But also you can twist this and go left and right as well. Now in some ways I think it pretty much resembles a robot. When you look at it you can see the little arms here, the feet, uh, and all we need is a face. So on my iPad the Reddit logo will do. So let's switch on. Pop that in there. And I can demonstrate the freeze functions. So there's an icon on here like a snowflake. If I press that once, that freezes the image. So if you're looking at something that's moving around and you want to capture it uh, without taking a photo, that freezes the image. And now I've got my thumbnail. So thanks very much to Andon Star for sending me this to test. I've had a lot of fun with it. It is definitely something we're gonna find useful in the future, uh, certainly for Raspberry Pi Pico builds. Next up, I'm gonna show some close-ups of insects. So if you're not into that sort of thing, probably better to leave the video here. So if you are interested in insects, uh, I found a couple, don't worry they are dead insects, uh, I found them in my window sills. So this first one is a proper alien one and you can have a look at the front of it. Uh, we managed to tip this up, my daughter and I are on. It is fascinating and this, it just is a tiny, tiny insect but obviously under this you can see it in great detail, all the little hairs on the legs and everything. And next up is a pretty common fly in the UK but you can see that it is absolutely tiny uh, and the details on the wings and everything are incredible. And I don't think I'll be using that for my thumbnail. Like you can see, you can actually, you can, on the eye, you can see the little tiny dots. Let me get my remote. That is crazy. Anyway, I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.